everybody it's patrick at the pitch deck we're here with round two at the game master's armory us to construct it of course we had round one earlier with a usury on ab2 and oasis for this one it's going to be ko and we will also going to be stacking this but we made sure that we had 60 cards this time um and we're going to be playing balance of justice so we start off with I think it's like two blues, uh, Tone plus Ether Wildfire. If I'm not mistaken. Or at least um, a Tone plus an Arsenal piece. So I think that's what it is. And I don't want them to cycle so we don't shoot these that we have banished and they're just baby blues anyway. So no real reason to get them sent because they won't chip. We just go ahead and pocket that arsenal piece here. I think it was a yellow tone, if I'm not mistaken, but I could be wrong. Swing big coming in. So this is a pretty hefty attack to resources coming in for eight. Having a reckless swing. I guess there's no blues that you can really take out, but most KOs will bring about one, maybe maximum of two. If it's uh, if it's two, they may just side out, especially for KO that second one. Is it still it is a blue for blue sake? Uh, so we think on this for a little bit. We would like to fully block with the second tome. Not bad. However, this tome is on the bottom because we need a buffer. So the blues that we pitch is going to be... It would have to be like home, then wildfire, then followed in two more. But I decide two health is worth getting the second tome into my stack already. So it has a way more value of just blocking two life anyways. So now it's uh, blue, blue, tom tom, and then we have wildfire. Currently, it's not looking too bad for the stack. We got to just keep up the stack as long as protecting our life. And I think this is a pulping. Yeah. So he unfortunately sends a pulping when we do not have anything that can protect it via. Defense reaction and arsenal, that'd be really great. Stop it out. The second swing big coming in for the discard. The balance of justice basically means that Kanas operate on 35 life against brutes. But what we give up instead is going to be Ragamuffin's hat if we overshoot. Not only that, we have to take out Oceans of Deja Vu. Because it is a non-block and we want to survive. That's basically the name of the game. Um, even to the point where you can maybe take one E-pot, so two E-pots and then one D-pot. But you want to make sure your, your non-blocks are limited. So I, I think I go like three of them, if I'm not mistaken. Three, uh, three no blocks. And there is a combination of what we kind of need for the pitch deck. It's not just whatever's in your pitch deck type of thing. There is a point to getting what you need in a checklist for this particular pitch stacking, but uh, I won't spill the beans. It's kind of like our team thing that we have drawn up that we want to make sure that we get. So bear fangs with the pulping, it would have been nice if we had that D-react to stop another 8 damage coming in. Um, he gets the last swing big to be discarded, which is really good because it is very, very powerful to be a 2 for 8. We don't have anything that can abuse the quicken. I don't put in the 
nourishing. However, I could abuse it because he has no blocking armor, basically. Um, it's one of those things that you would have to know ahead of time what the KO is bringing in terms of armor to see if it's actually worth using for nourishing. Maybe it's an oasis that's in my arsenal and that's probably what I'm thinking about. Because we don't have a blue. I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's the blue that I'm here. It's either blocking two with the extra tome and putting the blues into my pitch deck. Or putting an extra tome in my pitch deck and covering more damage. Basically nullifying this entire um, air fangs because I just stay at the same life. And then we get our first E-Pot down. Maybe would it could have been correct. Maybe would have been correct to use a non-blocking card, which is the potion, to pay for the Oasis. And then put the Toma Findall into my arsenal. Maybe that was probably better. So that way we get our blues into it. Now that I'm seeing that. So yeah, maybe. So we come in with a blood rush bellow. Then he goes with a wild ride. And then we have a 33% chance to hit what we need to hit, and we do hit, which is one of the best cards to hit. And it is another Blood Rush Bellow, so it turns off the go again. I personally, personally believe that it was probably better to just go with Claw, but it was... Swing... No, sorry. Wild Ride into Claw into whatever is in the arsenal, maybe. And that's probably what the game plan was. But he is making another agility on the back end to extend next turn. It is worth it to note that I didn't say at the beginning, he does have spell void one for the hands and then AB3 or uh, the boots and the helmet. So we play our second E pot. And we load up our arsenal. And the this match actually goes so long that I can't record the second or the third match. So I'm going to give you guys a brief synopsis um, on it later on towards the end. So he's playing this for seven. It's a yellow agile windup. So we get the sync. Be pretty good. But he's already played two pulpings, I think. So the first thing that he does play, we want to use the reaction on because we get value out of it if there's like a sin packing or a CNC later on. But we block for three here. And that's our second blazing. Maybe our first blazing. No, that's our first blazing. Yeah, that's our first blazing. So maybe we should have used another. Maybe I should have used the blue and then pitch pitch. There's a reason why I do that. Um, the play for blocking with blazing. Maybe I should have blocked with wildfire instead because this is a wildfire being shot out. Because I need another blue into my stack. I need six blues into my triple tome stack. So it would be two blues, red tome, red tome, wildfire, yellow tome. And I've lost count right now going through the edit how many blues. But I need the blues into my stack. I don't need extra combo pieces.
And now I have like a free arsenal that it's impacting the CNC kind of nullifies. I don't get hit by it, basically. And that play was actually throwing off my opponent pretty good. But that was our second wildfire. We can get our third wildfire or some red flares later on, if anything. With uh, two E-Pots and three Tomes into our stack, we we should have enough to be able to pay for our second wildfire, but we'll have that wildfire come back up later on. Our point to our stack right now is to get the blues, and that's what I valued when I did my decision to block with Blazing and not the blue and then pitch pitch with the Crucible. So like we said before, we did get lucky because we didn't arsenal anything. Seven go again on CNC's suck. However, they are just a vanilla. Six damage coming in. It's really juiced when you have a Oasis in your arsenal. You can just tunic Oasis and then you can block three from your hand. It's like the best feeling in the world. Because that just nullifies it and completely gets you a, another health back. Oh, uh, so... Beast Within Trigger comes in for the Wild Ride. Goes down one life. C and C in hand. Waiting for go again. Go ahead and sink. Red sink since it is only just the yellow wild ride. And then we'll have claw here. Maybe, maybe I should have saved that block for later on because this, this, this is just a blue. However, I'm still sticking to my game plan of keeping the blues into my pitch deck. Rather than, uh, I, I, I think that Taking one damage and using up the armor is good enough. Because there's only one CNC down. Maybe the sim packings will be in there later on. Typically, that's what you would help hope to use your armor on. Is like a stubborn CNC for seven, and you can just double block plus the armor. But uh, we're trying to keep up these blues into our triple blue count here. Our triple blue, sorry, triple tome. I want that triple tome to be as useful as possible. Oh, and we see a pulping, so it kind of sucks. That's but that's the last pulping though. And we're at 20, so I think we're pretty good halfway through our deck. It is worth it to note, I forget this count again. <laughs> so I don't know how, what my deck count is at this point. I can't even remember when I lost it, but um, take note, he is pitching a Blood Rush Bellows because he's probably thinking that he doesn't need Blood Rush Bellows to have me pop whatever I need, like to pop my Balance of Justice. But you can still get away with that with drawing two cards. Just in general off of these effects that a draw discard effect. I don't think you can do that though. I think you got to play your blood rushes. I don't think you can be scared to play your blood rushes, in my opinion. Because I can only play it once in terms of the effect of getting an extra card. You can't, you don't, if you don't do it on other decks, then why would you do that now? Like, you wouldn't be scared to do that for other decks. I'm in for seven here. So we get this to be pretty clean. Covering a full seven as well as making the pulping only take two. Yeah, no, no, no. Take uh, one because we had the red. I think I was our last sink right there. So the turn was only just one. I think that might have been kind of solid.
And then we're still not getting what we need. Or our arsenal i think i think now our arsenal pieces are coming in when we need them just not when we needed them last turn as the pulpings just happen to be lining up with us not getting a d-react in arsenal so we have another one in our hand however we can just put this wildfire in there i think we're at six blues now i had to Count all the other ones, but I think since we saw our second wildfire, this is our our second uh, wildfire coming in. So it'll just be pitched, sorry, sunk with the D react. Yellow sink, we'll keep that in there. The wild, wildfire in there. Or combo turn. And then we got another bear fangs coming in. Probably the last bear fangs, unless people run yellow bear fangs, which they typically don't. They'll side in like yellow wild rides for aggressive matchups. Or trying to be aggressive into Kanem before he kills you type of thing. It's definitely a long think. It's one of those tough decisions for two for eights. Well, it is conditional two for eights. That's why swing big is so good. But this still actually hurts pretty well. We have another sink. And we take four for this because of the Toma Fine Doll in our arsenal. It sucks that we can't uh, have the Tome on really sluggish turns because we can just gain a lot of life, but I think this is fine though. We gotta advance our pitch stack, I think now. So we'll get back some life. It's a good thing that I didn't overblock. Well, not necessarily overblock with the red, because I think I may have drawn into the red sink. I can't remember what my hand was, but it's um, you can't overblock for four for four. Basically, the claw was coming in for four. But covering three on the claw, covering four, gaining back three. I think all pulpings are gone now, so we can use these just to fix our stack. Fix our hands. We have to think on this one because I believe it's a blazing. If I'm not mistaken, I showed it to the camera slightly. But yeah, this is a blazing for sure. He doesn't have any agility on the field. Potentially, I can strip cards and do some damage. So we do take it because this is our second one, and we would like to have it in our our stack. That'd be really good. But we can't get it into it right now because I think the wildfire is already there. So it's a blue flare, but it's still something. Maybe one card we can strip out of his hand. And then we have a red tome that is the other card that's in our hand. Our last card, we'll just put it in an arsenal. 
Because now we can just use it to further our pitch stack slightly faster. This is coming in for two, which then the blazing will come in for four. Basically just a six damage turn. Uh, so he's pitching two reds for it. And we'll just go ahead and play for zero because we want it. We don't want to be in our banish. We'll just put it into our graveyard. So the might pops. I don't think he wants us to gain value off of the balance of justice because then after I blocked with it, he was kind of hiding the double draw type of thing. So he's now probably on two reds since he double red and then did this. He double red pitch for last turn. We block nine. We don't need these blues or whatever cards that I had pitched or blocked with. We don't need them into our stack. We'll just go ahead to put that as our action point and draw cards. I think we see our last blazing as well. We have we come back up to the last turn that we didn't want to have this to be a struggle piece of not finding our blazings in our pitch deck. We have two blazings down. We need this one. We cannot use it. We st we don't have our action point because we have our sonic boom that's going to be placed into our arsenal. So we'll just crew and then kind of go about our day. If I had kept up count, we're getting there. So we have to get to 62 when we draw up to combo. Which we have plenty of life to go into. But we forget. <laughs> I mean, it just happens. I got to get better at it. I got to keep repeating it in my head. I didn't have this problem when I was at the Pro Tour, when I was in the side events. I, I was able to keep the counts and stuff. So five and three would mean he would have to discard something. We'd have to discard the windup to give it a go again, which is fine to just go ahead and do that. But he does discard it, but then he doesn't have anything in Arsenal to go off of because it is one float. So there's not much of a read there. It could just be like a two cost that could be there in the Arsenal. But he's just setting up for next turn. And then we'll send this for four. We don't need the potion since we have two potions and then three three uh, alms into our stack. Um, the blazing that we did not want to banish was is in our hand and it'll go into arsenal. Right now, it should be blue blue tome tome wildfire yellow tome six blues wildfire and then extra cards after that. And that's all I really needed I th in my mind. I only needed those few things. So he does end up taking this. And this actually causes us to have a decision. So it's a sonic boom that the sonic boom found. We have to think on... Do we want to use the tunic counter? Do we want to strip cards out of his hand? Which I like stripping it towards the end. I'm a big fan of that. Instead of, I, if I have like the life buffer that I have now, I'm willing to take a slightly bit more damage if I can just start stripping cards with powerful attacks if they happen to line up. So we do end up using our tunic. This is a reduced cost. And then the AB3s. Now we're at 58. 
again, I don't know my count, but I'm not having the same feeling that I did for the Usury game. Um, I know I'm getting there close because you can just kind of determine all of the things that you would run into later on. Like if you haven't seen all three red players type of thing, which is what's in my hand. If I have the Sonic Booms, there should be some more Sonic Booms. That's I've only I've only seen two, and they were just there at that point. Um, defensive cards, things like that. Where are my all my defensive cards? Count them up. So that's one way you can get around you forgetting it, and then have a decent stack count in your head. I have been doing Mind Palace and uh, with a little bit of PAO, but it's like my own version of it. Person, act, person, action, object, and it is way better in terms of just like normally my my normal route of doing it. Because I do have it, like I mentioned in my pitch stacking guide, where it is Jean Grey is my wildfire, and then Goku, but is my gaze, the ages, and things like that. So, we have two blues, and this is where I mess up. I should have just sent the flare for four, rip a card. But this is really juiced to do flare into this. Um, and this is where I get to be one over on my pitch count. So we do send the flare for three. He can AB3 it. He can send the Sonic. F I can send the Sonic for three if he completely wipes out the flare, which means two blues. And I'm hoping that this doesn't make me go over. Like, severely over is bad. Little bit over, I can work with in terms of like one or two. Because of the fact that it's three tomes. <laughs> but he no fears here. He's trying to decide what he wants to banish, which is the pulping. Okay, so then he didn't have all of his pulping. That's his last one. So with this, he covers it and I let it cover the damage because then he needs to give me a blue if he's not wanting to give me a blue. And this is the tempo, like back to back turns. This is what I want towards the end of my combo or my stack. I want to be doing this, but I have a two card buffer, which I'm hoping to run into a pretty good stack right away, but he has a blue to cover it. Not like we would still banish it if it didn't if it hit. But uh, we end up being one over. So now we know that the wildfire is there with a tome. So red tome, wildfire, yellow tome. We don't have the luxury of using the... We have two tomes in our hand. We don't have the luxury of using it towards our pitch because we don't have... Um, we don't have the pot out so unfortunate so with this we can just say we don't die kind of just go about our our, our way and just say no blocks see if he pitches something but he probably won't we know there's one red pulping in his hand which is ab2 plus the spell void one but um we'll come back up to it whenever we get to it So when we did go over, we went over I one, which threw me off a little bit. And I forgot that there was a yellow tome underneath the wildfire. So I'm forgetting things left and right. I had, I'd have a little bit of leeway whenever I can just go tome tome and then I can probably extend my combo slightly better. So we do see red tome. 
It's really bad. I actually think there could have been a way out though. And I'll talk to you about it here in a second. Now that we we'll have to get all the banishes out of the way. Uh, so we'll get this, but then I forget about the yellow tome, and then I play the red tome to draw into that yellow tome, which will then be five blues underneath. Forget about the damn yellow tome. And this is pilot error. It's just one of those things that happens. My mind was not working correctly. When something small happens like that to put you on a very small tilt, you can't forget your stack. And that's what I did. I forgot my count and my stack, which is like death. So. Come on. Remember. <laughs> yeah. Remember your stack. <laughs> Come on, Patrick. Oh, Jesus. Okay. So two yellow tomes and a blue and then the red tome with no floating and two pots. So there is a thought that I could probably play this, see what happens. I probably should have, if I knew that the yellow tome was there, play the yellow tome and then play the red tome, things like that. I could probably use my boots to play the red tome in hand rather than the blazing that's there. Because at the end of the six blues, there's a double wildfire. So there's possibility that I could just use double wildfire to kill with the amount the massive amount of blues with some stuff behind it and i don't die so i could probably get him to very low digits if it happens so here i have to use it like this um I don't suspect Oasis, that's why I'm doing this already. Because I haven't seen it all game. We end up, go ahead, with the Crucible. And then I give him the priority window if he wants me to do anything like that. I always let my opponents, especially in the casual environment like this, we just go ahead and let them know. This is what you can do. You can do something to give the opportunity to instant play something. We have enough resources that one resource ahead of what's going to be in the combo turn is not bad. But if I can remember my stack, I forget that the blues are there. So I, I can probably do one banish, which is goes to four blues and then the wildfire, then go back to what we need to again, but we don't have the tone buffers. Give us good resources. We still have the two oceans and then we'd be at nine with it without an arsenal. Well, I guess, no, he does have the pulping later on. But we end up finishing a quickening. So we still have the two potions as well. If I'm mistaken, maybe three. Yeah, two. Yeah, 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 two. Because I remember pitching the other one to the um, Sonic Boom and then pocketing the Blazing. So we get rid of that and then I forget about the... I forget about the Spell Void. There's a lot of things that put me on tilt after this and that just kind of like cascades. It's just a player type of thing. Player um, error. One small thing should have not have let me like go off the rails but what i need to do is if i over pit if i over stack my count or sorry I, yeah if i go over my count or my pitch stack take a minute try to remember and try to recover as best as possible i think but i think the best way i knew that it was a thing was probably just 
And we did have a gaze, right? Okay, so we had a gaze coming in. Um, the best thing would probably be recover with the boots with the tome, I think. So I'm just explaining the interaction with the Metacarpus nodes allowing for any more instance, which he doesn't have any more cards in hand. That's kind of what I'm explaining. But I don't think I should have noted this. Maybe I could have gone boots into this combo, which is... 31, I think, from 33. So four down to, so maybe a 13 life left over. Because if I let this hit for five instead of six, Blazing would come in down to maybe at 24. And then it'd be 14. So yeah, and around 10 ish, which I don't like. Maybe I can save up for the next wildfire coming around. And me being a dunce, I know that there's cards right there. I should have counted all the blues plus keep the wildfire to be my banished target. And I can't do anything about that. So, but keep in mind, I still have my balance of justice on the field. So that is a thing that we can use this turn if we need to. This is a pretty beefy attack coming in with five cards. I think that's a blue. That's instinct. But yeah, if I had caught my... If I got my pitch deck right, it would have been dead. Just one of those things I gotta improve on. With the name, the pitch deck, it should be pretty prevalent to say that I should be good at pitch decking, which generally I'm decent at it. But this matchup is probably the most demanding of all pitch deck matchups because you cannot mess up once like that. You have to get your count exact. You have to get what you need exact. I should have been at 62, should not have banished the Sonic Boom, shoulda, woulda, coulda, but we got to move on and improve later on, which is why I record this. I tell you what I mess up on. You can see maybe, okay, maybe I don't need to mess up on that. I can use that as a learning curve myself. We're here at three. Not great because I need to block a little bit and I need to keep these two cards in my hand as much as possible. So he pitches a blue. So he had three blues, which is unfortunate. But we don't notice balance of justice right away. We have to like analyze the field a little bit. So that's one of the things that I and get better on it too. Get better at too. Which is kind of like take each decision by its micro and macro improvements along the along the game, basically. So we notice it. Hot balance. Did draw two cards. Now we can safely block and play our E pot. We need the D-Pot to play this Wildfire, which kind of blows. We play this as our action. We can't strip anything and he has five cards, which is really rough, really, really rough. Because it's basically just one card attack. Yeah. 
and then it was a red wind up that he pitched or, or um, discarded basically now he's down to three cards in hand he plays this from arsenal which is go again i don't think this should have been the play i think you go if you have a go again like you did you use claw and then use the resources that you could have later on But we got to think about this because I think it's not going to be great. It was like a blue flare with the wildfire. So I'm trying to grasp at straws as much as fucking possible. And I can't even full buff because of the wall the nodes is being gone. So my attempt to try to kill is even thwarted more. I can't buff. No. Not buff fully. So we got to think about this in the most comeback of the century way in our head. And I just don't think we have it. So we have to pitch the blue flare along with the wildfire with one float. We do get that one, but... And one more blue. I think Tunic may have came back around. I can't remember. So he does have like the beast within, which is probably why he did this, because he probably wanted to make sure he can kill without me blocking. And he goes to 21. There's a red, uh, blue flare. Red flare still doesn't kill. Because it's coming in for three. Which then the red flare would come in for five, goes to four. It's... Oh, six damage already. So he would go into 12. Yeah, I just can't do anything like that. Can't kill. So yeah, I guess I have the tunic up. And I just can't kill. All because I messed up the stack. We end up playing another KO and we get there for round three. It's the guy in the back with the yellow shorts. So we end up getting there and he had three Oasis with AB3. Thanks for watching, guys.